Hi, this is Monica with PitCam, and I'm here with Andrew from Attack Attack. Hi, Andrew. How are you doing? Um, how's the tour going so far? It's uh, it's going. It's uh, it's been pretty good so far. It's just getting towards the end here. We've got a few more days left, so just getting kind of tired, you know. This is your first European tour. Um, has the reception been um, as expected, or what what did you expect? Um, we really didn't know what to expect. We had no expectations whatsoever. We hoped that it would you know, we'd be received well, which um, has happened, and uh, the response has been really great, and kids who come out of the show have been really excited, and the shows have been really, really crazy, actually, so. And what has it been like touring with, uh, with the Germans? Um, I mean, so far, all of our German shows have been awesome, like the best so far in mainland Europe, so, I mean, it's been pretty sweet. Have you had the chance to see any of Berlin? Uh, no, I actually just got here, like, 45 minutes ago. So, no. <laughs> okay. um, um, you guys were among the first bands that started doing the whole post-hardcore um, meets electro thing. Um, what made you or inspired you to go in that direction? Um, we just kind of, just the way we write as a band, um, everybody just puts in their two cents worth like in every single song. And um, I mean, the, the way like our music came together was really just us. You know, you know, one person will write a part of a song and then someone else will come in and maybe change that part a little bit or add another one. And um, I mean, the way that like all this music happened, the way we started mixing like metal and dance and stuff like that was just because, you know, like Caleb was really into dance and programming. Some of us were into metal, like some of us were into pop music. And rather than just picking which one to play, we just stuck them all together. Um, in, the, in the last couple of years, the scene has, has pretty much exploded. There are now so many bands doing the same thing that you're doing. Um, are you in any way um, afraid that it's becoming more of a hype than, a, than a, a real genre, that it could actually just blow over? Um, I mean, the way like all of that works kind of depends on the bands. Like There are definitely some bands that jump on you know, the bandwagon and just write like the kind of music you know, like we write just because it's popular now. But I mean, for us, it's it's kind of like the you know when we started with someday came suddenly and that whole thing kind of caught on, and then like the whole crab core thing happened, and uh, you know we really started to get recognition for that kind of genre. That's when, like you know, rather than just continue to try to stay in the limelight of that achievement, it's time for us to like move on to something new and like reinvent what we did the first time. So I mean, if if you don't do it right and you just kind of just try to live in like your 15 minutes of fame, it's of course it always ends. But like if you know that it's time to move on and do something different, then you know that's when things start to get established. How about the record companies? Because you almost get the feeling that um, all you have to do is throw in some autotune vocals and some dance parts, and somebody's willing to sign you. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, every time some kind of uh, like musical fad or, or whatever happens, you know, every everybody wants a piece of that, you know, like as a record label, you want, you know, you want to sign like another band, like the one that got big doing whatever it was, because everybody wants to get in on some of that cash, and I mean, there's winners and losers, as you always see, um, but it's just kind of like, it's just the way like the music industry works. Yeah. Um, you've gone through a lot of changes in the lineup since you started out, and it was 2005. Um, how has that affected the band and the songwriting and everything? Um, it's really pushed us a lot. Um, it's been really interesting to be a part of um, because every time there's a lineup change, all of us have to really like reevaluate like where we're at with the band, like where's the band at, like how are we writing, what are we doing, and every time like a new change happens, like you can obviously see that um, there's like a drastic change in our music and the way we write. So. I mean, it's just been really interesting. It's been like a really sweet ride to like see how each of those like circumstances have changed the way we write and like really helped evolve and like mature us as a band. So it's not demotivating at all. It actually it just makes you keep going. Yeah. Um, does it bother you in any way that there? I mean, there still seems to be fans that just can't get over the fact that you kicked out Austin Carlisle. Um, you know, wherever you you see a music video or anything, um, there's somebody commenting on, on Austin, even though he hasn't been in, in the band for so long. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with that? I mean, does it bother you at all? Not really. It doesn't bother us at all. I mean, it's, it's just the way 
the way things work. Some people let go and other people just can't. They just have to hold on to those little things forever. But, you know, that's like, that's part of the experience. It's part of life. That's part of being a band. You know, that's part of like the whole learning process. Do you think it also has to do with the fact that a lot of your fans are really young and it's just uh, the way young fans behave sometimes? Yeah, I mean, definitely a lot of the younger fans are much more um, like territorial, I guess you might say. So they don't really like change very much. Mm. But, you know, that's that's like that's part of that's part of, you know, being a band is is being able to kind of push your fan base, you know, to try to, you know, try to grow up with them and try to be part of like the influence that you know, like as they mature like so do we and so it's like there's a balance there. Mm. Um, you released your self, uh, self-titled album um, last year, uh, summer mm -hmm. I think it was. Um, how does that one differ from um, your previous release? Um, this new record is just a much more, it's like the, we took the formula that we used to write a lot of the music on Someday Came Suddenly but we really branched out and tried to use other genres of music that we really like. Like, there's a lot more, um, like, hardcore influence on it. Um, there's also a couple songs on it that are just really, really heavy and, like, real melodic. And then there's some songs that are super poppy. And then you have a song like Lonely, which is just all singing and, like, piano. It's like a power ballad. And we really just took, like, what, what we'd created the first time and just really pushed the limits, like, way further. It's done really well, hasn't it? Also in the charts in the U.S.? Uh, yeah, I think it debuted at 24 in the top 200, and then we were number one on the U.S. independent charts. So. so do you feel like you're reaching more um, kids than just uh, the scene kids? Yeah, absolutely. I think we are. And um, yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, you, you did a video for Smokahanas, and there's so much going on in that video, like people getting killed and stuffed into trunks and cars getting set on fire. Could you just tell us a little bit about the concept of the video? Um, honestly, with the, with the Smokahanas video, we just wanted a music video that wasn't going to suck um, because we've kind of struck out in the past. And we actually shot uh, another video for Smokahanas in the summer right before Warped Tour this last year, and it, was not, it wasn't what we expected. And so we just kind of had to start over. And so we hooked up with our friends at uh, Thunder Down Country Productions. And we were like, hey, look, we just, we want stuff to, we want things to explode. Like, we want an action movie for, like, a music video. And they were like, sweet, let's do it. And so we just kind of took, uh, we just took, like, the, this whole mafia concept and just threw it in there because it kind of fit with some of the lyrics. And uh, we hired, like, a pyro guy and, like, did a bunch of other special effects and just kind of went for the moon on it. And it turned out freaking awesome. Was it fun? Oh, it was so much fun. <laughs> How long did it take to make? Um, it took two full days. And this, because we shot uh, the performance parts and the car exploding all in one day outside. And then we went to, the, uh, we went to the, the prison where they shot the Shawshank Redemption and filmed all day and all night there doing all the story parts. Um, so tell me about the, the previous video for Stick Stickler. You got a lot of criticism and everything. What, and you also made two videos, didn't you, for that one? Yeah, we did. Um, what was that? I mean, why? And um, we originally shot, there was uh, a guy that reached out to us. Oh, this would have been back in, like, I want to say December or maybe January of, like, 2009. And he, he offered to shoot a music video for free for us. And so we were like, yeah, I mean, why not? It's free. Let's do it. And we did it, and it, um, it's, we, were gonna, uh, we were originally pushing to uh, release it on MTV2's Headbangers Ball, but they wouldn't accept that video. So we had to start over again. So then we hired, like last minute, hired another person to do another music video. And then that second one came out, which debuted on MTV's Headbangers Ball. And that one was terrible also. But the TV station took it because it was really generic. And so we kind of just tried to like really showcase our live show in it, and we we caught a bunch of shit for it, which I'm sure you saw. But I mean, who really cares, you know? And that's actually um, your second screamer, Nick. Was that his name? Yeah. Lip syncing to Austin's vocals. Yep. What was that like? It must have been pretty surreal. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was just kind of it's just what had to be done at the time, you know. Why did you decide on, on Caleb for um, taking over the, the screamer part of the band? Um, we decided on Caleb because, uh, I mean, he was already in the band, and he screamed, and he's extremely talented, which I'm sure a lot of people have seen now. And it was really kind of a no-brainer, and we were kind of kicking ourselves. We're like, wow, we could have totally just done this like before we even got signed, like before we even left on the tour and like went through you know, the other two vocalists. We could have just gone with him and just 
that would have just solved everything. But you know, that's part of life. But I mean, yeah, it was it was just a really just a no brainer just to have Caleb doing. Um, is it? And he still does programming and synths and everything. He does all that live. Uh, no, he just writes it all, and then we backtrack all of it, okay. and then I have like all of it back like on my sample pad. I see. Um, and your clean vocalist, he left not long ago. Yes. <laughs> How do you deal with that live? Uh, I mean, who takes over his part? Um, we have our friend Justin Heiser, who actually plays bass in the band Color Morale back in the States. He's out here now with us in Europe. And then we had our other friend on the last headliner we did in the States. We had our friend Sean Mikowski from another band called My Ticket Home, who we've grown up with in our hometown. So, I mean, for the time being, we're just having our friends come out and just hang out with us. And, and you know, they'll sing and play guitar for the tour. And then we just, you know, just kind of take, take it as it happens. Yeah. Are you planning on replacing him permanently? Um, we're not really sure. That's like that's like the beauty of like being our band is we don't like at this point in time we've done there's so many lineup changes and stuff that it's there really isn't a whole lot of pressure to like really put action into it. You know, like we're still on the road, we're still playing, like, you know, the kids all understand, like they're into it. It's just kinda like the band we are at this point. So we're just kinda seeing like how it works and um, we're starting to write some new music. We're gonna hit the studio when we get back from this tour. So we're just gonna kinda see what happens and just figure it out from there. Okay. So that's actually, that's what you're going to do for 2011, just uh, record a new record. Uh, any, any festivals, stuff like that? Um, we are doing, well, I mean, there's some festivals in the U.S. that we're playing. We're playing uh, the New England Metal Fest, we're playing Bamboozle, and we're playing um, this other festival. I think it's called Extreme Thing in Las Vegas. And, um, and that's all we have on our plans for right now, just because we're going to spend most of our time writing and recording. Um, when can we uh, can we expect to to hear the new record? When do you think it'll be released? Uh, we're not really sure. We're actually trying to figure out what we're going to do with that exactly because we have uh, we have a few ideas going on right now as far as doing releases, and we kind of want to get something out um, much sooner, like as soon as the summer possibly. But we probably wouldn't be able to get a whole record out by then. So we're thinking of like ideas, you know, whether or not we would do like a like a re-release or just. You know, whatever. We don't even know. We're just trying to think of something creative and something fun to do. But yeah. How important? How, how important is it for you guys to um, to evolve, to to change the music that you're doing, so that you don't get stuck in this in this genre? Um, it's it's pretty important for us. Um, I mean, it's it's a lot more pressure on us because we kind of like started it. Yeah. So it's you know we're kind of we're still kind of looked at to see like where is this is the trend going to die or is it going to keep going or are we going to change it or how we're going to change it if we do and stuff like that. So I mean there's there's like a lot of pressure on it but it doesn't really bother us because that's just what we do, you know. As long as you have fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. um, well, thank you so much for talking to us. Um, anything you want to say to your German fans? Um, thank you so much for coming out to our tour. Um, we are hoping to return here as soon as possible, maybe sometime next year. So I don't know, it's kind of up to you whether or not you uh, really want to see us back or not. Thank you so much. Thank you.